Now the year was 1793. The Yankee privateers were raiding the coast of Newfoundland and robbing the Newfoundlanders of their codfish, which was their only means of livelihood. And as the saying used to go, they used to use the Newfoundlanders' heads for cannonballs. Now, William Kelly, he being the principal man in our place at that time, he called a meeting in his fish store to see what could be done because the population was on the hand to starve it, and he gave a thunder and fine speech, and he offered up his old hooker to any six men who would take her up to St. John's and bring her back down with a load of provisions. Up speaks one, I'll go. Yes, there's another, I'll go. I'll go, I'll go. And, and I said, look at here now, boys, you can't all go. So we picked out six of the strappingest young men there were in Simon at that time, and me being the youngest, <laughs> why, they made me the skipper. And we fitted out William Kelly's old hooker for that trip up to St. John's. Well, we arrived in St. John's and tied up at Bain Johnson's wharf, okay. And we then loaded pork, beef, molasses, and flour, and likewise, sir, a punch and a rum that we placed on the quarter. Now, owing to the wind being ahead, we never put her out, but the next day, the wind being fair, we let her go. And we had a thunder and fine time going down to shore until Darby Dooland, who was standing watch on the forward deck, said he spied a sail, which appeared to be a bark of about a hundred tons or more. And as he bore down on us, we thought he wanted to speak to us. And as he was flying the custom house flag, we didn't think it any harm. But as he brought her down around our quarter, and down from his main peak came the custom house flag, and up to his main top, Went to stars and stripes, tarnation most. Well, never says die till you're dead, boy, says I. Maybe they're like the devil, not half so bad as they're painted. Anyway, we'll hope for the best and prepare for the worst. Hooker ahoy, says he. Hoy hoy to yourself, says I. Where are you from, says he. St. Pierre, says I, with a load of salt, thinking I might outwit him. But he being up to all sorts of tricks, why he knew twas a pack of lies. Surrender, says he. To who, says I? To the Republic of the United States, says he. Be damned if I do, says I. You'll be damned if you don't, then, says he. And jumping into his boat, said he said, let ten of my men jump in here with me. And it wasn't long before there was a bayonet pointed at each of our breasts. Now will you surrender, says he. To your honor I will, sir, says I. And it wasn't long before we was bound hand and foot and placed in the cabin of that Yankee privateer. They then hauled our old hooker up alongside and they unloaded pork, beef, molasses, and flour. Watching the punching. Rum, said one of the crew. Fetch it along this way then, said he. Hush, hush, says Mark the Darby Duel. He hung his two daddlers right over his head, and I said, Hush, hush, Mark, me darling feller, keep your hands behind your back, case someone comes, and by and by, you might have a chance to free us all. Hush, hush, says Darby Doo, and I hear footsteps, and just then, the captain's head appeared in the companionway. How are you now, me landlubber, says he. Fine, sir, says I. You'll be no great spell that way, then, says he. That's all you knows about it, sir, says I. We're going to scuttle your old hooker now, says he. Thank you kindly, sir, says I. And it wasn't long before we heard them chopping, chopping, chopping. And the gurgling sound told us our old, old hooker was gone to the bottom. Why, we almost give up to despair. But, creeping on deck, about an hour later, we heard one hell of a ruckus up forward, and there they was, bailing the rum into him. Yes, my son, bailing it into him they was, and I said, hold on now, boys, for about an hour or so. And then, rushing on deck, about three quarters of an hour later, each man seized an iron blaying pin. It wasn't long before we had them Yankees bound hand and foot, they being too full of liquor to show much fight. And we placed some in her cabin and some more in her forecastle. And, and to their surprise, we placed a man at each companionway with a loaded musket that we had found amongst the ship's stores. 
Now, we didn't have any trouble with them Yankees going up to shore, they being too securely bound. But owing to getting into the calm out there off Petty Harbor, we didn't arrive into St. John's until the next day. Where there, we give our prize over to a British man of war. And the captain, he being so pleased with us, why he give us 450 pounds to be shared amongst the ship's crew. And he set us up with a new hooker and give us new provisions and set us off for home again. Where there, they had us give up for lost. And sure, and wasn't we almost, when we was captured and bound hand and foot and placed in the cabin of that Yankee privateer. <laughs>